Argument Alice, Framework Freddy, Comparison Connie, Structure Sam, Delivery Danny, Rebuttal Rosie, R, the Diology Debate Super Team. They are here to help develop your superpowers. Today we will learn about two powerful concepts you can use in your debates, especially when making a rebuttal. These are the concepts of correlation and causation. We could do some research and find that each year, ice cream sales and time spent exercising increase at the same time every year. If we did not think carefully about this, we could conclude that ice cream causes students to exercise more. Based on this, we could say that we could get people to do more exercise and increase their health by giving them more ice cream every day. However, we know that this probably wouldn't be a good idea. But how do we explain the connection between ice cream sales and exercise? The more likely cause for an increase in ice cream sales and an increase in exercise is the coming of summer. When summer comes, kids play outside more and get more exercise. They also eat more ice cream. This means ice cream sales do not cause more exercise, but rather that both are caused by the warming of the weather each summer. This example illustrates the exciting concept of correlation versus causation. Debate arguments almost always involve some connection between two things. If we argue that homework should be banned because it leads to too much stress, we are making a connection between homework and stress. Even further, we are arguing that the more homework that exists, the more stress students have. We are saying that homework is correlated with more stress. Correlated means that two things are connected to each other. There are a few different types of correlations. Positive correlation means that two things move in the same direction. For example, as one thing increases, the other thing increases too. Our example of homework above is an example of positive correlation. We are saying that the more homework students have, the more stressed out they will be. We could also say that the more homework students do, the better grades they have. This would be a positive correlation between homework and grades. A negative correlation means that two things move in the opposite direction. For example, as one thing increases, the other thing decreases. We could say that homework has a negative correlation with fun. This would mean that the more homework students have, the less fun they will have. Now, just because two things are correlated to each other, as we see in our example of ice cream and exercise, it does not mean that one thing causes the other thing. This is important in debate because our topics usually require us to focus on a particular cause of a problem. If we are debating about the problem of students being too stressed, we can ask ourselves the question of what is causing the stress? Is it homework assigned by teachers that causes stress? Is it pressure from parents? Is it pressure from students themselves? Is it the increased competition of university admissions? If we get rid of homework, will it eliminate the stress of students? Or will students simply get pressure from other areas? If a team is arguing that homework should be banned because it leads to too much stress, we can argue that it is not homework that causes stress, but rather pressures from parents. Therefore, getting rid of homework will not solve the problem. If we get rid of homework, then parents will simply find other ways to give students stress. Here, we are saying that homework might be correlated with increased stress, but it is not actually the cause of stress. Let's look at another example on the topic. PE should no longer be mandatory in schools. The con team would argue that we need to have PE because there is a problem of obesity in the world today. Kids are unhealthy and are gaining more and more weight. The con team could argue that weight loss and exercise have a positive correlation and that giving kids more opportunities to exercise will lead to a decrease in obesity. The pro team can challenge this by asking whether or not exercise is the cause of obesity. They could argue perhaps that there is another more important cause of obesity, like eating unhealthy food. The pro team could argue that even if the lack of exercise is associated with obesity, it is the diet that impacts obesity the most. They could say that for many kids, if they eat unhealthy foods all day long, even with exercise, they can still become obese. 
Furthermore, you could argue that eating unhealthy foods makes kids tired and lethargic, which makes them not want to exercise. Therefore, by changing our diets, the kids will have more energy for exercise and will be motivated to exercise on their own. We could argue even further that too many kids are depressed these days. Depression leads to a lack of interest in exercising and an increase in unhealthy eating, and that this is the leading cause of the obesity problem. The critical point here is to challenge the causal claims that your opponents are making. If you can point out that there is a different, more important cause of the problem they are addressing, you can effectively challenge and rebut their solution to the problem. Just because two things are correlated does not mean they cause one another. In your next debate, listen carefully to the connections and links made by your opponents and ask yourself the question of whether they are mistaking correlation with causation. Good luck.